H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Perhaps I was assuming that you do not come from an IT background, but you do come. So maybe technically or non-technically, whatever comes to your mind by looking at these pictures, you can tell me. I'll show, uh, show a series of four to five snapshots and you need to tell me what exactly you think about them. Maybe technically, maybe, maybe not. That's completely okay. So okay. if I just, uh, yeah. This one, okay, it has some, Thing. I believe that ship is the uh, data I'll, warehouse. I'll, 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 I'll just uh, show a few more and then oh, you okay. can complete, make your story and uh, tell me. Okay, this one. Okay, sure. And then you have another. All right. And then uh, you have one more. There are a few things which I masked out for now. I will unmask it in a while. And uh, there's one more. And then there's one more. So, yeah. So, yeah, these are the, no, I'll come to this one later. So, these are the few. Like, uh, you see one here going back. So, what exactly you think? What are these? I mean, what so, comes to your mind? Yeah. Yeah, Sorry. I guess in if I think about in Altrex, since I, like I said, I don't have any idea about the SQL or Teradata. Uh -huh. I, didn't, I don't have any idea about those. What I work, when I work on Alteryx, I pick up the file, wherever the file location is. So if I think about like that way, that this ship is like, you know, data house where I'm storing all the data. Those uh, little things are in data, like, you know, the white things, those are data. So I'm bringing those in my um, storage. So I'm thinking that the data is storage. Okay. Okay. And what this and then, guy is doing here? Any... So, I guess the guy doing is over here. If I think about in Altrix mind, I'm trying to connect that those data to the server. I guess I'm not okay. sure. Maybe that's maybe wrong. Okay. okay, that's okay. That thing is right or wrong. Yeah. Okay. Um, those again, those things like the white things, I feel like those are like a data. Mm -hmm. and... Okay, got it. Yeah, if we go to the next one, so there's just a guy going on a boat, so let's skip it. What exactly is happening here? Anything? Well, this is kind of like the same thing I explained at mm -hmm. first. This can be the warehouse where everything is, all the data is in storage. Okay. All right. Fair enough. So let's see what exactly are these. Okay. And sure. these are not the same. This what arrangement what you see in this screen is mm -hmm. obviously not. So so if I ask you, what is the difference in this slide and this slide? Um, well, what it's completely see? different. That's this yeah. this slide is if I'm thinking those green one and the white one, I'm thinking mm. those are data and that is a house. That means we are keeping those in a data warehouse. And mm. this is just the, like in a warehouse, I'm thinking, uh, where we are storaging all those things. And this one is actually not the same thing. This are like a getting those data from that, like with using that tool, getting those data from there and bringing those data in there. Now let's understand this. So it was just I wanted to bring in that thought provoking part here. So have you heard of a term called data lake? I did. I did, I did hear about it, but I never got the opportunity to work on it. Data yeah. lake, yes. So let's understand that. OK, so these are a few snapshots which talks about what exactly is a data lake and what is a data warehouse. All right. Mm -hmm. So. 
this what you say will come to like uh, technical things but uh, if i talk about what this uh, pictures tell us so we have data because you are also working in analytics it's which is predominantly i can say an etl tool right i have not got a chance to work on it i've just heard of it uh, at a high level alteryx is a kind of etl tool is it or what can you say about that uh, tool so that i can also take an example to make you understand better alteryx yes. if i uh, ask you what is alteryx alteryx, alteryx uh -huh. is kind of like a well is it is it is the automation where you will bring the file wherever it is it's a sql server or maybe regular you know drive mm -hmm. you're going to bring the uh, data from there and you can do your all kind of calculation in there and yeah. bring the output file from there however you like to see it so mm -hmm. this basically is you can do all kind of calculation all kind of chart everything in there but your data is coming from somewhere else so your data, yeah. your data is coming from maybe sql server or maybe data warehouse yeah. or maybe something like that or maybe your regular drive or data leak also i heard a data leak also to connect the alteryx and that um, server and then bring those data from there to alteryx and then you can do anything any kind of calculation you like to do in there and once you're done with those calculations what happens next um so in, since i'm in a tax right tax is mm -hmm. like a um you can do any kind of calculation means like you know you can literally do any kind of like you know uh, of course you heard about a pivot tables so you can do yeah. um summarize calculation you can do if calculation you can do uh, index match and h lookup anything that does in excel like it's basically the excel calculation we do but excel has a limited power or tricks has more powers and it you can use advanced formulas in there and you can do the same Excel calculation there, but Excel you have to do repeated every year. Alteryx you don't have to do it. Once you built it, you are done. Next year you're just gonna run the workflow, and then your calculation is there. Right. You can do so macros and everything. Yeah. Got it. Got it. So you're doing some calculations. You're doing some pivot tables. All those are okay. You're doing some transformation on the data which you have got from some sources. But what is your final end product which you're delivering to the client? Um, that's like, you know, however, uh, client like to see my data, like, you know, for example, if they wants to see, uh, they give me a raw data, for example, and they're saying, okay, in the Australia, raw data, I like to get the calculation out. Like, for example, I like certain states or certain country, and then I like their sales or I like their, um, customer ID or like that. So we have to uh manipulate that data and find the information that exactly client wanted and then we get the output file exactly the way clients probably says that okay this is my raw data it has a lot of information but i don't want everything all i want you kind of summarize it for me you are you going to do the pivot for me or anything or you're going to do the calculation like a portion of calculation but i want based on the customer id i want based on the customer state or country or based on the uh, customer location or maybe something like that. So then based on those information, Alteryx is does, like you can do it in Excel, but Excel is a lot of times, like I said, it's not that simple. So you do it in Alteryx. So Alteryx is kind of like you can do all kind of advanced formula in there. And then you're just going to get the output file the way your customer want it, like based on their criteria. Exactly. So eventually what we are delivering is as you said information is a report right maybe your mm -hmm. client has some questions four or five mm -hmm. questions and with the help of uh, alteryx as a tool or excel for if it's a simple question we use excel or whatever tool we are using to mm -hmm. eventually generate a report which business will use for their business purpose for whatever decision they want to do do you right. agree to this part or not right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so I think there is some little bit gap here because you know what you are doing currently, but what is the end goal of what we are delivering to the client? Probably maybe you don't have that visibility. So this is what exactly happens that I have seen in my projects also when I ask uh, uh, the folks around that, uh, okay, you're doing this, you're doing some testing, you're working. So as you talk, talked about Alteryx, we have worked on a lot about maybe you, if you would have heard about Informatica, Talent, these are also ETL tools. We have worked a lot on these. So mm -hmm. this is also the same. I mean, they do transformations and all, but the end product is what we need to understand, which we deliver to the client. We deliver a report. 
we tell you they'll have some questions maybe you're working on a tax domain so you they might have some five six whatever uh, x number of questions and we are supposed to answer them and we are and so as you said you get a lot of uh, data sources you take that you do some calculations and eventually you generate some pivot and all how on what basis you generate they might have asked you that okay based upon some accounts based upon whatever attributes they want the groups groupings to be done in pivot table so these are the requirements and the eventual end product what we are delivering is a report so i was trying to just understand what exactly we are doing now let's see from a data warehouse perspective so what i was showing this is as of now there are like a lot of data sources you we might have if you can see like we have data coming in from social media we have data coming from transactional systems we have data coming from iot devices mobile applications business applications there are a lot like there are a lot of sources from where you can get data now what to do with that data if the data comes in and just sit somewhere the way it is sitting here it may not be like we cannot consume it in a proper way so what we are showing currently on the screen is a data lake where generally businesses doesn't know what to do with the data it's just that whatever their data they're getting they just keep it in their mm -hmm. data lake so it is just irrespective of let's say you have financial data you have hr data you have let's say like or else if i keep it very simple like you let's say you have a product Related, related data you have customer related data all data are just mixed up and keep kept in a data lake now what mm -hmm. this shows here this shows that if you are trying to fetch some information let's say my uh, client says that okay give me those customers uh, who are the highest uh, uh, revenue generator now you have a big data lake and from there you need to search for a customer data so what this particular slide signifies that if you're trying to search data from a data lake it will be very slow because a fisherman in a lake searching for fish it's a slow activity so this symbolizes that if you try to do something on a data lake try to do some operation or try to fetch data from a data lake it might be time consuming because you don't know where your data is stored. It is just in a very random half wizard manner you have just kept your data. Now, let's say if somebody wants to do, let me remove this mask. Okay, somebody wants to do some data analytics, like whatever we are talking about, like you create pivot tables, so if you term it in a technical way what we say that you are doing some data analysis you are generating some sense out of the data from different sources and you are delivering it to the client maybe in the form of pivot table maybe in the form of whatever report or in a form of graphs or charts whatever you're just making sense of the data which is around and you're giving it to the client so let's say somebody comes up in a speed board and they want to do data analytics and machine learning they want to make sense of the data if i keep it in a simple term in mm -hmm. that case they will not go to a data lake in data lake you do not have data in a proper way so what they do they go to a data warehouse and what exactly does a data warehouse contain it contains data as you rightly said but the difference is here the data is stored based upon different subjects let's say you have a green these green boxes these are let's say maybe sales related data these are let's say product related data in inside room there might be some other container where you have financial data so your data is grouped based upon different subjects in a data warehouse and if you have your data stored it's just as our room if we keep our things in a proper and proper order then at a later point in time if i want to go ahead and find out some object i can get it easily but if my room is completely messed up i might not find that easily the same concept applies here in a data warehouse we keep our data based upon different subjects or based upon different topics based upon different uh, domain and then when you have different requests coming in let's say you have different ships or like somebody wants to talk uh, just take financial data or somebody just wants to take um, 
product data or somebody just wants to take sales data they can just go to the specific compartment specific room and get that data eventually what happens retrieving data from a data warehouse becomes faster is fast compared to a data lake the only reason we keep data in a proper organized way in a data warehouse that's the whole idea why we have data warehouse and yeah as i told these are different uh, sources from where we can get data now so what makes a data warehouse fast it is like storage we mm -hmm. have we can store any amount of data in a data warehouse the data movement like if a question is asked right like uh, if you have multiple sources the, the way we can see here and if you need to provide answers let's say a pivot table to a business user which will have some information the mm -hmm. way your data warehouse should be that it should give you or you can you should be able to retrieve data quickly it's not that if you're looking for 1 million records it takes you uh, 6 hours to give you the data the data movement or the data retrieval in a data warehouse should be quick you ask for a something it should generate within milliseconds now the benchmarks and all are milliseconds earlier it was seconds and minutes but now in millisecond we need to get the data so the data movement needs to be quick you should your data base or data warehouse where we are working should be able of doing a data cataloging means your data should be arranged based upon different subjects your sales data should be grouped together the way i said like your financial data should be grouped together so that's what is called as data cataloging and eventually all these things if you have a robust storage if your data movement or data retrieval is quick and if you're storing data maintaining the principles of data cataloging then it can help you in overall analysis like if you want to do generic analytics like generating maybe a uh, pivot table or if you want to do a predictive analysis let's say if you want to predict what can happen six months later so all these can be done easily if we have robust storage a good data movement and data cataloging done and why are we talking about all these we're talking about all these here is because teradata as a database has all these characteristics it has robust storage it help the way it stores data it can help in quick data movement and you can also store your data based upon different subjects you have schemas and all which we'll discuss later which help you to do data cataloging so that eventually the analytics and the predictive analytics can be done mm -hmm. in a robust way now there are two terms used here a generic analytics and predictive analytics uh, do you know what is the difference between these two what can be um, generic analytics? Yep. generic one you can do like a um just regular analytics um analytics and the uh, predictable one you use some like in altrix mind you are using some advanced tools to find them advanced calculation and advanced way to look at it, the data it's not just a calculation advanced way to look at the data all right let's see a few questions So this is just a tutorial presentation where, um, let's say, I'm a retail store manager and this one data, data warehouse professional, and there are some questions being asked. Now, which are our lowest and highest margin customers? Okay. Now, which customers are most likely to go to the competition? There are, there are different questions which you can read yourself. Can you tell me which question here you feel can be answered via predictive analytics? Okay. So. Which you need to predict, which you do not have a um, sure shot answer that, okay, this is what the answer would be. You will just be predicting. So you, you asking me to choose one for, yeah. for all of from a question one. among these, which you the answer would be not an accurate one. It will just be a prediction. OK, so in my uh, mind, I feel like the one is says that what impacts will new products and service have on revenue and margins. This is can be the one. And okay. also, if I go 
further looking that um, what uh, which customer are most likely to go on the uh, go to the computation that can be also exactly so where we do not have a concrete answer we base our answer based upon some assumptions that's mm -hmm. where it's about predictive analytics so you have a new product to be launched and you are supposed to say that okay a new product will be launched what impact it will have on my product and like uh, on my revenue and the margins so this will be based upon some existing data you'll do some extrapolation you'll do some uh, calculations around it but it will not be a absolute or an accurate answer no. just like this one which are our lowest or highest margin customer because for this you can look at the sales data and you can do a sorting you can maybe in an excel you can sort your data and you say mm -hmm. that okay this is the highest margin the lowest margin which is a concrete or an or an absolute answer and right. that's what comes under this part generic analytics in generic generic analytics you have your data you have everything in place it's just that you need to retrieve the data in a proper way right. but when it comes to predictive analytics it's all about as assuming that okay you have a customer base of 100 customers you need to predict that okay currently these are 100 customers which are uh, purchasing with walmart uh, what is the likelihood that in the next six months the out of these hundred customers 20 might not purchase with walmart and go to somebody else so this is a prediction which you will do based upon some parameters probably you will study their buying pattern and you'll see that okay um, we see a continuous decline in the buying behavior over the last six months earlier it was 200 dollars per month now it has become like over gradually reduced to 50 dollars a month and now it is like maybe 10 dollars a month so this customer because there's a continuous decline in the bank pattern we can say that these are the customers who must most likely to go to the competition so this is just an assumption it might be because the customer is not in the country maybe some other reason but our data will consider that person as a candidate who might leave and go to the competition so prediction is done on data which will which is not an absolute answer it will just give you and obviously like there are different um, that's where these machine learning models and all are coming which will predict future for you it might it, with some probability it might be a point eight point ten but it is never a one probability that okay this is, this is definitely gonna happen no so this is what is predictive analytics now why am i discussing about these uh, terminologies why am i showing these questions there is a reason to it and the reason is what we will see with some building blocks here so terra data data like uh, whatever database we are talking about like oracle terra data sql server all these the bigger picture is that these are all used to answer some or the other questions like the questions which you have seen here whatever kind of questions so eventually the data which resides in any of the database we have few theoret theoretical topics generally the courses which i take it will be mostly hands-on but terra data as a concept you also need to know some like architecture and all so we'll do that we'll do that parallelly but uh, primarily our focus would be to mix it up with the sql part so that we do our hands-on along with uh, the theoretical aspect is that okay with you or you want to cover, cover up the theoretical part first and then go ahead with the sqls or shall we do it together that will that for me makes more sense what do you say um like is uh, Shantar, I actually don't have an idea. So however you think that will help okay. me to learn but better, next, not next. just like learn, also the learn faster, I guess, yeah. um, you know, um, I mean, you are teaching for a long time. So, you know, each student has a different way probably needed. But to me, right. I feel like yeah, however you will advise, I'll take like that right. way. Yeah. So um, your requirement to learn Teradata, is it to, attend interviews to switch a job or to work in a project which has Teradata? Um, exactly? Well, no, I'm not switching a job, but my job is, you know, these days are, um, like I said, I'm in the corporate tax, but tax is not a tax anymore. It's all about a technology now. So, um, so I actually like to learn like, you know, SQL, not, not just all trees. I want to limit it on that because I want to learn other stuff so that will enhance my skills. So a lot of time um, we do a lot of, you know, data analysis and all the analytics stuff. We hire like, you know, big four, big public accounting to do our things. Mm -hmm. So instead of 
doing those, you know, they can still help us. But if we know someone in our department knows, that will help us a lot. So that in that point, I like to learn this just because to enhance my skills. Got getting my get, get getting your point. So it's mostly to do your data analysis, and uh, for that, SQLs is what is very very important. So I understand mm-hmm. your requirement. Primary Teradata is one. You want to understand Teradata, but mostly you want to go out after this course using SQL, right, to analyze data Both. and do something with Both. the data. Both SQL and yeah, uh, SQL and then um, Teradata. Uh, also, yeah. I like to, um, and this is not included in this course, but I also have a goal to learn, um, you know, Power, Power BI query and all that stuff. So that's probably would be the second things to do, but this is primary right now. Yes. Okay. Okay. Got your point. So SQL and Teradata, Teradata knowledge, working knowledge, fair enough. We'll, uh, and that's how the uh, course is made up. So basically, initially, what we are doing now is understanding what exactly is Teradata and and like what is data warehouse and where exactly does Teradata fit in here? So I was talking about mm-hmm. that before it dropped off. So I'll continue on that. So we were discussing that uh, whatever data warehouse projects we implement or anything, then that's where in the beginning of this conversation, I asked you the question that you uh, prepare, like uh, you prepare pivot charts and all what eventually you're doing. So the aim of any data warehouse project is to answer business questions. That's correct. Yep. Right. Yeah. You have. I had given a few sample questions, which was there in a comical Victoria representation. Now, the aim, finally, we should, what we should remember is we are answering business questions so that businesses can take informed decisions. Earlier, what happened when we didn't have database, when we didn't have data warehouse, businesses will take decision based upon instincts that okay, my business mm-hmm. is doing good in the eastern region, so it will do good in the western region they do not uh, they never cared for looking at the demographic or the buying pattern of different regions so it was predominantly based upon instincts with the advent of data warehouse what happened people or businesses started taking decisions based upon numbers based upon statistics and that's where they started taking informed decisions Mm -hmm. now how do they do that okay so the final aim is this to take informed decisions to answer business questions based upon data now how do we present our answers so now when you do your pivoting and all then how do you give that answer is is it in an excel format or is it uh, in some other format how do you present your answers it depends it depends so it's not just like a pivot we use pivot is like a very simple one there is like yeah depth calculation a lot of time a lot of time like Mm -hmm. searching the customer searching the numbers or maybe um since i'm in the accounting or tax so mine is related to a numbers so um what a lot of time is charting also like how the sales goes is goes down or up like you know to do the charting also it's not just like you know calculation a lot of time chart you know getting the chart out to see the after the calculation how you know where the sales is goes down, which customer is providing more sales and where the customers located is all this stuff. Yeah, yeah I'm just looking for a report. I do have worked on Power BI. I have some sample report, but it's on another uh, laptop. So yes, so eventually what we do is we build reports. We, it might be using some tool like Power BI, Tableau, uh, business objects, or it can be just a plain simple Excel report. But eventually, But what we do is we prepare a report. Or if you summarize those, uh, like let's say if a report runs 10 pages long and business told us that, okay, you summarize that, we build a dashboard. So, right. so aim is to answer business questions so that businesses can take informed decision. How do we provide those answers? We provide those answers in the form of reports or dashboards. Now, a question. What do you need to prepare your report and dashboard? What is required to prepare reports and dashboards? So, so the report or dashboard when I need to prepare it, we need the data. We need the data that's, yeah, that will provide us the information. Based on that, we can create the report or dashboard. Okay. If I go a step further and ask you what kind of data, what will you answer? Uh, the data, it can be like, if I think about it in Alteryx, it can be raw data. And then I can manipulate the data and get the information out from there. 
Okay, all right. Well, if you have a raw data, all right, will you be able to answer a question something like this? Which customers are most likely to yep. go to the competition? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Let me tell you. Now, this is for preparation of reports and dashboards. We cannot just do with raw data. Okay, in our data warehouse term, I'm talking. What we need is something like a historical data. Okay, what I mean by this. If we want to answer a question something like this, which customers are most likely to go to the competition? Can I answer this question by knowing a customer's just last transactional data? Or do I need access to a customer's last maybe six months of data to answer this question? Six months, six months of data. Their six months right. of data will provide us those information, not just a last right. month of data now. Exactly. So it's a historical data which you which in a consolidated way can cater to the reporting needs or whatever the business asks for. So mm -hmm. reports and dashboards are fed through historical data. Now the question comes in where does this historical data come from? And that's where your answer becomes valid here. It comes from raw data. Okay, now you have like, a, and from where does raw data come? If that's a question. If I'm talking from a, let's say, just a retail store perspective, from where does the raw data come? Um, in my last job, um, yeah. they had a, like in a JD or DAS kind of like things that we had to pull the data from there. But in my current job, I'm seeing that they get the data from uh, SQL server or maybe data, a data warehouse. And now they also use the Teradata. So these are the uh, place they are getting the data from. So you are consuming data from maybe an SQL server or Teradata, but who has inserted the data into that SQL server or whatever database it is? Do you know that or have you ever thought of it? Mm, who has? Actually, SAP. I'm I didn't get I'm, that last sentence. Oh, no, I'm saying I, I'm not sure about that detail where they are getting the data from yeah. because my uh, my role is to get the data out, uh, but yeah, not exactly. the data, not the data. Uh, I, mean, I believe somebody pulls from somewhere, but I'm not sure where they pulls from. Okay, okay. See, yeah, that's where like I wanted to give a complete picture. So until here, these three boxes are, I think, clear, right? You have any questions around it? No. Hopefully, your aim is to answer business question. You prepare reports and dashboards, and uh, you do it from historical data. Now the question is, where do you get this historical data from? And I'm saying that you get it from raw data, as you use the terminology raw data. Now, I mean, a lot of time, a lot of time don't need to be raw data. It might be probably there is a calculation probably last year, prior years, and before years. There is a data already storage in the you know their own drive shared drive and we can get the data from there okay all right now if i talk from a perspective of a person who doesn't know anything about data warehouse data anything let me talk from that perspective you enter into a retail store okay you selected some products you add it to your cart and you go to the billing counter and mm -hmm. your bill gets generated. Do you know what happens next? Technically. Oh, after I bought some stuff and the. Uh... Yep, yep. You have the bill is generated. You pay for it. What happens during that time? Um, I believe this goes to their accounts, accounting or accounts receivable department somewhere. So, let's say you have you went to store, you purchase some items, your bill gets generated. As soon as the bill gets generated, an entry is made into some database, mm -hmm. right? And that's your source. Your source is always fed by some point of sale. Point with, uh, from a retail perspective, we call it as a point of sale. Let's say if it is a, uh, let's say telecommunication, whatever call records we, uh, whatever calls we make, all the duration of the call, the start time, end time, the uh, amount for that particular call, all these are saved somewhere, which is like uh, retrieved by your nearest station, nearest transmission station where your network signals are going. So the point is, these are the point of 
like capturing your data so when i say that from where the data comes into my terra data or from where the data comes into the uh, sql server it comes from somebody who is manipulating or dealing with your transaction you have a billing guy who generates a bill at the retail store so that person mm -hmm. is generating a bill right we use he scans your uh, uh, barcode and then as as soon as the barcode is generated and entry is made into the data warehouse or in a database so the point is you have something called as a recent data, transactional data mm -hmm. store which stores only your recent data data maybe one day worth of data two day worth of data whatever like a week's data it only stores recent data is stored now let's say today is uh, maybe 10th of march okay some five customers would have visited my store all their five customer transactions are present here in this particular recent transactional database now for this reporting to happen you need access to historical data so this data from this uh, for now or the technically this particular or else i'll call it db1 database one and this is database two okay You have let's say a customer id okay product id and some amount i'm just putting some random values uh, and date of purchase Now you have a customer ID one. Let's say some product he has purchased, amount spent, let's say some thirty dollars. Date of purchase is tenth of March. Some other customer came in whose customer ID is let's say two. He purchased some other product, some twenty dollars, and on the same day, tenth of March. Similarly, one more customer with on the same day. So let's say you have three transactions happen in the store on tenth of March so what happens you'll have something called as i'm not sure whether you heard of the term called oltp or not there's a system called as oltp which stands for online transaction processing system and they are responsible for holding only your recent transactional data let's say on 10th of march we had three transactions happen in a particular store now what happens at the end of the day or at the end of the when the business closes all these data three records from 10th march will be moved to this historical database which we call as olap online analytical processing system three records on 10th of march okay. this is Called as OLAP. We'll discuss a lot about it. I'm just giving you know where we know. Sure. Online analytical processing system. Now, the three records came in from 10th of March, and this database will be empty or cleaned up for the next day's load. Okay. So now on 11th March, this will again be empty, this TB1. And again, let's say on 11th March, you have five transactions. All these 11th March transaction will be, uh, let's say this will be replaced and on only the 11th March data will be stored here. Let's say you have five customers coming in on 11th March. So all these five transactions will be held here temporarily. And at mm -hmm. the end of the day, all these five records will be moving here. So what is happening every day? This OLTP acts as a temporary space where your data is stored for some time and eventually it moves into an OLAP where all your recent and historical data is stored. You can see you have the 10th March. Let's say if I'm looking at this OLAP in a DB2 on 11th of March. So I have a 10th March, which is historical data as well as 11th March, which is my recent data. So the point why I'm discussing this is you have recent data, 
-hmm. it needs to move to a historical database at regular time intervals. Now, who is responsible for doing it? Who does it? And that's where comes your ETL tools. While uh, like uh, you were, uh, like when you dropped off from this call, I was just Googling what exactly is an Alteryx. So because I have heard of it, I've not worked and I understood from you also. So it is also an ETL tool, like Informatica or like um, as a, a talent. So there are different ETL tools available who are mm -hmm. responsible for transforming your data, cleaning your data and making right. this automated data movement from this source to this target. OK, you do whatever you talked about the, the different mathematical operations and all. These are all done here and we call it as business transformation. Like you apply different rules, whatever business has told us. So we apply right. all these and. This is where your business transformations happen now. Mm -hmm. And. Why am I discussing about all this? Because it gives you these all five blocks combined together. This mm -hmm. forms a data warehouse. These are the different steps by which you populate data here in this particular place. OK, mm -hmm. you start from a point of sale. Your data is stored somewhere temporarily mm -hmm. and then you have ETL tools because as you said, it is raw data. You need somebody to transform that data, to clean that data, to make mm -hmm. it uh, more readable. And then mm -hmm. eventually it is stored in a historical database from where the reports will consume it and then eventually they'll answer questions to business. That's correct. Yeah. Right. And this is where your Teradata put in. Teradata is a OLAP database. It has a huge power. It can store your data and like a, it can you can retrieve data faster and Teradata is predominantly called as uh, like a, a OLAP database. However, Teradata also has the features of an ETL tool. So you can do your like business tool transformations and you can apply different calculations by skipping this particular box. So what Teradata is powerful because it has the power of uh, OLAP as well as it has it can do your ETL activities as well. So that's where we will learn. So this was these five building blocks were just to tell you that. OK, this is the overall picture of what we do. Mm -hmm. Your alterics might come in in this box. Sorry if I am putting the spelling properly. All right, your alterics might fit in here. Teradata is something which will be covering completely this box and partially this box and this is what we'll be doing. So you see there are different utilities here. We mm -hmm. fast deload fast deeper fast export import. So these utilities because Teradata also has seen that there are a lot of uh, uh, competitors in the market. So if they just keep it as a plain database, it might not work for them. It might not be that much uh, like uh, uh, like business wise uh, good for them. So they have come up very recently with so many features and these utilities are the features which come in an ETL tool. So that's where I said that it has all the features of a OLAP database and it has some features of an ETL tools. And these are those some features which are the utilities of Teradata. So we'll discuss about these utilities, but what will be starting off? So we talked about what exactly is a data warehouse. We talked about what is OLTP and OLAP. OLTP stores your recent transactional data. OLAP will be storing your uh, historical data and what is active data warehousing and all we'll talk about it and these are technical technological terms and all and these are different architectures of Teradata like what are the different uh, components which make up Teradata and all we'll discuss in detail and then these are some features which makes data retrieval in Teradata faster you can retrieve data within fraction of seconds so uh, and this is all about how the data is stored so we'll discuss about primary indexes uh, secondary indexes and there are a few database objects these are to do with uh, different admin related activities and these are like it helps in your ETL activities it uh, like if you have a huge chunks of data which you want to be loaded immediately so there are different utilities like fast load and all which helps you to do that so we'll discuss about those and then there are data specific features like uh, explain collect stats ppi and all which we'll discuss and then we have like a lot of uh, hands on around how do we do Terra SQL? And there are some 
features within SQL which help us to do uh, some specific mathematical calculations. So we'll discuss about that also uh, later on in the sessions. This is, so this is the plan of the course and we just started off with a high level overview of what exactly is a data warehouse and we'll continue from here.